All right, so with the basket, there are a ton of little parts. Um, so it can be a little bit intimidating, but if you just take your time, um, and basically what we've done here is just lay it out and how it goes together. So you'll see basically that the basket comes with these posts. Um, a few are shaped in a square format, and a couple are shaped in a round format. And we've taken the square ones and put them towards the back, the two round ones in the center, and then another square one in the front. We've also got these posts, basically um, two in the front, and then also two in the back, and then basically these pins that hold the posts onto the stand. And then we've also got the cross brace here across for the front of the basket. So what we're going to do is basically just put this together, but we will refer you to page 34 of the user manual because it may be a little bit easier to follow how to assemble that basket uh, with the user manual. But again, one tip, I would lay it out just how it's supposed to go first. That'll help you out with putting this thing together. All right, so now that we've got the basket assembly attached to the stand, we're going to go ahead and install the paper guides to the front of the printer. Basically, you have several paper guides that clip in to the bottom area of the printer. So we're going to squeeze these tabs and then insert them into the holes under the, pa uh, the paper guide locks. Next, we'll go ahead and as uh, assemble the basket for the manual. That basically just goes to the right leg and just clips in. So with the new 7900-9900, we have a spindleless load for the, uh, the roll paper. The media adapters, the end caps, are separate. There's no spindle, again, obviously, between the, the end caps. And on one side, you have the tension levers that basically will lock the media core onto the end adapter. You also have a built-in 2-inch, 3-inch adapter switch. So when I push that, my 2 inch becomes a 3 inch and then if I push it back down from a 3 to a 2. So that's all built in now. So we'll go ahead and grab the handle and insert the end into the core. Make sure it's all the way in and then we'll snap the lever to give it some tension so there's no, no play there. On the printer itself you'll notice we have the, uh, the white arrows here um, and what we're going to do is we're going to line up the right spindle end or the right media adapter end with that arrow and then you'll also see the left hand side as well this is free moving if we've got it in the unlocked position so if we had a shorter roll we would move this in and then make sure our left end cap lined up with the arrow on a 44 inch roll we'll just go ahead and move it all the way to the left where it can't move any, anymore then we'll just simply rock the roll in and then we'll push the left end and then lock it into place. Very simple on how to load media now without a spindle. To load the paper into the printer to start printing, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the front panel is in roll auto cut mode. And if you look at the, uh, the LCD display, you'll see that currently we are, but just to show you how to toggle through that, the left arrow button is the paper source button. So if I push that, you'll see roll cutter off sheet and then roll cutter on and we can just continue to toggle through that just so you see an example of the different modes in. We're going to go ahead and load it with the roll cutter on. All right, So we'll have that on the front display. To feed the paper into the printer all we need to do is basically bring the paper down into the paper path and you'll notice when we did load it onto the media end caps the paper was winding over the top down into the printer not the reverse way. So we'll simply grab the paper and then feed it down into the machine. We're going to feed it basically until we can actually see it coming out of the front and we can grab the paper. So we'll just kind of pull it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because the printer is actually going to go ahead and load the paper and straighten it. So once I pull it down past a little distance, we'll go ahead and go up to the front panel of the printer again and we'll push the button in the upper right hand corner which is the paper load. Now it does say press pause button on the front panel. You can go ahead and press it. If you forget to press it, it will time out and go ahead and load the paper itself. Once the 
the printer is straight in the paper, it's going to ask you what type of paper is in the machine. If it is currently on the selected paper, just simply hit OK and select Yes. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and select No because we have a different type of paper than plain paper in the machine. So we'll go ahead and hit OK and then we'll navigate to the correct paper. Now the initial roll that ships with the printer is called double weight mat. So we'll go to the mat paper family, hit the right arrow button, scroll down to double weight mat, and then hit OK. That tells the machine what type of paper we have in the printer. So once the nozzle check pattern is printed, the printer will automatically cut it. We have the cutter on mode. What we're looking at here is basically every color has a series of stair steps. Looking at this one, this one looks perfect right out. If we did have, have gaps in the, uh, the printout here, what we do is go ahead and execute a nozzle clean. So to clean on the printer, what we're going to do is go ahead and push the uh, what's labeled as the black button, um, push it and hold it for three seconds and it will run a cleaning. So if we do need to clean the nozzles, what we're going to do is we do that from the menu system. So I'll hit the right arrow or the menu button. I'll scroll down to maintenance, hit the right arrow button again, scroll down to cleaning, hit the right arrow again, and then run to normal cleaning, hit the right arrow, and then hit the OK button to execute the cleaning. I'm only going to do that if I do have problems again in that nozzle check pattern where I'm missing nozzles. All right, this does use a little bit of ink and does waste a little bit of ink, so only do it if you have nozzle problems. At this point, we're going to go ahead and run a head alignment. To do that, we'll hit the menu, scroll down to the head alignment option, hit the right arrow, go to paper thickness, select the paper type if we haven't already, but we're going to go to mat, then double weight mat for this initial paper, hit the enter button, then I'll hit the left arrow just to get back out of that, go to alignment, hit the right arrow, hit the right arrow on auto, we're going to run the UniD first. That's going to run a check pattern. And then after the UniD is finished, we're going to scroll down and select by D all and then run the by D all pattern. So we're only going to run those two patterns, basically the UniD and then the by D all. So let's go ahead and run the UniD first. So we'll hit the right arrow button and then where it says print, we'll hit enter. The printer at this point is going to go ahead and print out a pattern itself read it in with its electronic eye, and then adjust itself based on those readings. All right, so again, this is the UniD head alignment test pattern. Once this pattern is finished printing and reading, it's going to take us back to that menu so that we can select the by D all setting and then run that one. All right, so once the UniD all pattern finished, it's going to take us back to ready. We're going to hit the right arrow button, to go into the menu again, scroll down to head alignment, hit the right arrow again. We've already set the paper thickness. We're going to go down to alignment, hit the right arrow button, hit the right arrow button again on auto, scroll down to by D all. We're going to go ahead and hit the right arrow button and then hit OK on print. And this is going to print the by D all pattern. So after we've done the head alignment, we've pretty much wrapped up the installation, assembly, and setting up the printer itself. We want to talk about a couple of things actually on the front panel of the printer at this point. Um, the front panel has a color LCD that we've gone into a little bit earlier, but you'll notice that we now have color indicators for each ink color. And then to the far right, we have two brown bars that are basically the maintenance tanks level indicators. Basically, when you run an ink clean or an ink switch, the ink has to go somewhere in the printer, and where that goes is in the maintenance tanks. Now, the maintenance tanks on the 9900 are on both sides of the printer, on the right side and on the left side. So you'll see, basically, this is the one on the right side. On the complete opposite side is the other maintenance tank. I can simply just pull this out, and you'll notice there's the ink. All right, now when this fills up, you'll see the bar on the front panel get lower and lower and lower, meaning its capacity is less. When it completely fills up, what you want to do is just throw this whole thing um, or dispose of this whole thing and then replace it with a uh, new maintenance tank. Now one little tip is the right tank on the 9900 will be used much more. Um, so what you can do is over the life of the tank is you can rotate these two. 
So you can take the left one, put it in the right side, because that right side will fill up a lot faster, so you'll get a little bit longer life before you have to, to uh, replace that tank. So to insert the tank back in, we'll just basically push, and then when it stops, it's inserted, and then on the front panel, again, it'll indicate that everything's okay. So at this point, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cover the back connections because we're getting ready to plug the computer into our printer or into our network. Obviously here you can see the power plug we showed you earlier. Moving on to the left, right here, you have the Ethernet port. Um, the Ethernet port is where you would connect it to your network, um, either your, your router, your switch, your hub, or your network jack in your office. To the left of that is basically an I.O. port for optional accessories for the printer. Um, and then to the far left of that, you've got the USB 2.0 plug. Now, in terms of what you want to connect this to, it's, it's totally up to you or uh, your connection method. Uh, USB 2.0 is fine, works great, will run the, the, the printer fast. Ethernet is the same way. The flexibility with Ethernet or network is obviously you can be a little bit farther away from the computer than uh, USB ports. With the printer came a little booklet that has your user manual, software, as well as one important item we want to point out today, and that is the Epson Preferred Warranty Booklet. Um, please make sure that you hang on to this, don't lose it, because just in case you do um, have to get service on the printer itself, uh, the Epson's toll-free number is in here, as well as what's called your unit ID number. It's very important that you hold on to that unit ID number, because you'll be able to talk to a human being a lot faster at Epson if, you, if you're able to enter that number into their prompt. Now one thing also is definitely call DTG first. Um, we're here to answer your questions and help you out with getting your printer up and running and also continued printing. So definitely give us a call first. We can answer 80-90% of the questions. Um, the 10% that we can't answer are service related and you will need to call Epson with this unit ID number. So that pretty much wraps up the setup of the Epson Stylus Pro 9900. The 7900 is very similar. The, uh, the stand is a little bit different on the 7900. If you have any questions, feel free to call DTG at 800-681-0024.